need to go nine and three in their last 12 games to secure a winning record. I think we can all just wave goodbye at the winning record. I, it, it's not happening, folks. And we all want it. <laughs> let, yeah. let, let me. Let, if there's one thing to salvage for this season, it's, hey, get to 500 or get to above 500. But that is highly unlikely to happen. Not impossible, but highly unlikely to happen. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays from game analysis to player interviews. We've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. Bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's game 162 just like us. Or you remember those early Devil Ray days of Wade Boggs and Carl Crawford. We are here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the Rays daily. In every season they've gone to the playoffs, except for 2024. But there's still baseball remaining, so grab your favorite Rays gear, settle in. Subscribe to our Locked on Rays YouTube channel and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on the X machine and the Instagram machine at Locked on Rays. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code O lowercase locked on MLB to win $50 instantly when you play just $5. Well, Ulysses, the Rays, unsurprisingly, lose two of three to the Cleveland Guardians over the weekend. Uh, their record continuing to be subpar and a lot of other issues with the organization right now. Uh, on the good news, I guess, is the brutal road trip is over. So there's some home games remaining if you want to go to the Trop and enjoy that. But uh, let's get into it. Weekend takeaways. What stood out for you from the weekend that was for the Tampa Bay Rays? Well, you know, I, I think it, it, it should be said the the – the games were mostly close. Even the the the, the sweep in Philly, uh, there were games that they were almost coming back from. Like you know, it, it was competitive baseball. But yeah. um, that's why your record is seventy three and seventy seven. Though it's because at, in the end, you just don't have the pieces to to go through it, uh, mm-hmm. and and or the luck and or. Um, you know, the wherewithal to, to, to do it. So I think that should be said four and six, they could have been much worse starting off. They started off at Philly, right? Uh, the, the, the road trip. No, it were before, before it was before, I believe. Yeah. Because the Philly one was right in the middle and then the four gamer in Cleveland. So yeah, we, we are uh, so checked out from this raised ball club. We are so used to the team winning that when they're not winning in September, it's like, what the hell, man, what are they doing? I've dealt with this since 2018. <laughs> Not even more, man. Like uh, it's crazy. Um, I saw. Okay, so there's 73. The road trip started in Baltimore, by the way. Baltimore, Baltimore Philly, and Cleveland. Murder Baltimore. Baltimore, Baltimore. Thank you. Um, so they're 73 and 77, which means they'll need to go nine and three in their last 12 games to secure a winning record. I think we can all just wave goodbye at the winning record. I uh, it it's not happening, folks, and we all want it. Let, yeah. let, let me. Let, if there's one thing to salvage for this season, it's hey, get to 500 or get to above 500. But that is highly unlikely to happen. Not impossible, but highly unlikely to happen. Exactly. So, with hand and heart, uh, as race fans that we are, hey, I I think it's not going to happen. And 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 it's a shame because it's it's been really nice to have a franchise that doesn't go under 500. That's, that's been really, that's been really great for the, the last fact that we, have, we, we haven't had to deal with this in so long. I mean, imagine locked on Orioles for uh, <laughs> before this streak that they've been on. It was a lot of crummy, crummy, crummy seasons. We've been doing this since 2019. So uh, every year we've been doing this, like we said in the intro, we, they've gone to the playoffs, but even 2018, that was a fun college team type, and and they won 90 games. This hasn't happened since 2017, when Lucas Duda was the greatest, uh, you know, deadline signing by the race, and right. uh, and that was Longo's last season. 
that's how long it has been. So that's one of the takeaways from the weekend. The other one is a little bit more, I don't know if esoteric is the word, but um, a little bit more big picture, non-baseball stuff, more like sports broadish. Um, right. Uh, Tosh allowed two runs over four and a third innings in a start. He had six Ks. And this was Cash's quote. I don't think he had the best feel for his stuff, but it's a good sign when you don't have your best stuff and you're able to compete and limit a team like that. Agree with you, Kevin Cash. A hundred percent agree with you. That is exactly what at least you need from a budding ace, a guy that won, who was the best pitcher in the in the American League, at least for the month of July, and he had been pretty good in in June as well. So right. awesome! I love that quote. Now, my problem with this is that after Tyler Alexander pitched seven innings and allowed six runs with three home runs. This was Cash's quote after the game. You know, Alexander stayed at it. I'm sure he's not happy about the home runs and falling behind the guys, but he competed. Okay. I That was May 12th, by the way. Okay. I can't. I, 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 sports quotes need to be better. They need to be better. I'm sorry. I, I I'm I'm putting down the gauntlet and 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 this is not a bashing of sports media, but more of a, 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 a sports media culture and coaches and players bashing more like because it's we we have to have a little bit more substance, people. You you can't you cannot go in front of a microphone and just say gray after somebody's performance and then we just have to like write it down and like oh yeah i guess he competed like no no that's what happens though because when you have a baseball season that's 162 games and a media market that is really not going to challenge kevin cash at times again if kevin cash was a manager in new york philly boston they'd be like wait wait wait. uh no can you explain this further whereas hey people are just Mark Topkins trying to get his quotes and then get out of there and go to the nearest diner. That that's what we're at. And my take on this, I guess, is the Taj Bradley quote compared to the Tyler Alexander quote. Maybe I guess the idea, the thought process is Kevin Cash has much greater expectations for Taj Bradley than Tyler Alexander. So he's trying to uplift Tyler Alexander and motivate Taj Bradley. That's what I get from all of this. Fair enough. Four and a third. You're like, okay, you know, uh, I'm expecting more from you. So yeah, I guess he competed. And then Tyler Alexander gets bashed for seven innings. He's like, Hey, no, 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 you did good. You did good. He competed too. He (laughs) competed. I guess in a way they all competed. They all play. They all pitched. That's my thing. That's my thing. It's like, yeah, you know, you have to be a little bit more specific with your, um, with your with your vocabulary, yeah. I, it's it's all I, it's all I'm at. and I know that this this is not going to change. This isn't going to change. This is not no. going to change. Um, but it's just it just feels like a little bit. Why do we have thirty minute post game shows if all you're going to say and transmit and broadcast are just banalities? Right. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, and I think um, I I don't know how you resolve that. I guess you have people in the room that are going to ask more thoughtful or deeper questions or follow-ups as opposed to just sticking a microphone in Cash's face. Hey, what'd you think of the game? How did so-and-so do? And then that's it. Oh, thanks. Thanks, uh, coach. Appreciate it. it. It's, I mean, if if that's where we are, then just give the man a multiple choice question <laughs> sheet and then yeah. he'll just fill it out. Yeah, he competed, or he did good, or we tip uh, we tip our cap to the other pitcher. And then he just has to send it. And then we have our like that's the quote. Yeah. Like we got to do a little bit better with this sports media. And this happens in baseball. This happens in soccer. This happens in football. This happens in yeah. basketball. This happens in every sport. I don't know if it happens after chess matches or if it happens after archery competitions. Right. Can't quote me on that. But major sports. They all have the these banalities, uh, yeah. you know, as quotes. And maybe that's a directive from uh, the communications staff at yeah. the Rays: keep it simple, 
keep it basic. Example. Don't go into much detail. We don't want you to go viral here. We want to go viral for for fun things and not uh, coaches' comments or players' comments. It's a shame, get man. It blown out. So it's a shame. that's kind of where we're at. Um, and, you know, with baseball, again, you have spring training, you have 162 games. There's only so many different ways that you can say things when you're trying to basically say the same thing. That's yeah. kind of where we're at. Uh, we have more to discuss, Ulysses, but first we have to tell the audience something very important, and that is FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. It is, as you know, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. So good, I'll repeat it again. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. We also want to tell you this. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on the YouTubes or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Ulysses, getting to my takeaway from the weekend that was, yes, the Rays generally competed except for Saturday, 6-1 loss and one for 10 with runners in scoring position, but it's the same story with the offense struggling to put runs on the board. They might get a couple hits, might get a walk or two, ton of strikeouts as per usual, but not being able to cross the runner across home plate. Uh, just to reiterate, the Rays did win on Friday, three to one. They lost on Saturday, six to one, and then lost on Sunday, two to zero. Um, and the runners in scoring position, as you've underscored over the last couple of weeks, if not months, Friday, one for six, Saturday, one for 10, and then Sunday, oh, for five. Uh, having said that, again, I'm trying to pick out silver, silver linings here. And that was a couple things. One, Junior Caminero making history with three doubles in one game, uh, becoming the youngest Ray to do that and the youngest MLB player to do so since Manny Machado performed that feat in May 23rd, 2013. So at least we have our golden goose, we hope, in 2025 and beyond in Junior Caminero. Um, and I know his overall numbers aren't as pretty as we would like, but he has put 24 balls in play at 100 miles per hour plus since August 23rd. And two of those doubles that he hit in one game were, if I recall, off the wall. So very close to being Dinger. So yeah, he had, like Dave Wills used to say, another biscuit or two for breakfast. They would have gone over the wall. No mm -hmm. doubt in my mind, eventually those balls will go over the fence. And then you don't have to necessarily worry about runners in scoring position all that much yeah uh good for junior to just again this is his september fall training and and just like other guys you just get acclimated to major league pitching and you know you've got a dozen games now like hopefully you get as many at bats as possible i i think the the three double thing is kind of crazy <laughs> that it hasn't happened yeah. since may 23rd 2013 for um a young MLB player because we've we've had a lot of really good young MLB players and so that it hasn't happened since 2013 it just that's that's pretty cool that's yeah that, that's I mean that's 11 years I mean we were juniors in college like that's, that's how long crazy. it has been um so pretty cool for a junior to do that now let's talk about the runners in scoring position because I know that um if you know baseball you know that that's mostly a variable you can't control. Um, you can't just be like, okay, let me get 
guys that are really good at runners and scoring position. Like you can't just like fix it like that. It's not like that. Right. Um, however, if you know baseball, you know two things. Number one, hitters usually will hit better with runners on base. That's yes. just usually what that's that's a that's a baseball one on one. The other thing we know about runners in scoring position is that you have to get hits in order for those to be successful. So that's where the whole oh we're just gonna fix this with home runs. Like yes, does this team need home runs? A hundred percent. Like mm-hmm. they are they are lack lacking a lot of power in that lineup. And they did show that um, over the course of the series because Logan Driscoll got his first career homer and then Jonathan Aranda got a solo homer. So um, two guys that need to do it, two guys that need to show, hey, 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 we we got something that maybe you don't have. Yeah, and and Aranda has been impressive at the plate, which is really nice to see. Um, In fact, that home run was almost, it was such a smooth, almost half three-quarter swing and for him to have the power to, to get it out of the ballpark that might be a building block uh, for him. Just got to keep yeah. it up and be consistent with it. It can't be once in a blue moon because we've mm-hmm. seen many guys time and time again that show they're good for a week, two weeks, three weeks. But can you do it over the course of month after month after month? The legend of Mikey Matok, who took over a September and then you're like, holy crap, do we have the next, uh, you know, Mickey Mantle <laughs> yeah. in our hands? And no, we did not. But uh, so with that, do, does this team need power? Absolutely. But it also needs players that can just get hits. Right. Like, it's okay to get a guy that gets hits, hit a 280 average, and 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 maybe a 700 OPS. Like, the, the Chandler Simpsons of the world. Like, you, you need a guy that can just get hits. A Luis yeah. Arias, who's an amazing talent. He's going to win his third batting title in a row. That's so impressive. Like, again, I'm going to the eliteness. So... Right. Bother me. Uh, excuse me for going to the end of the spectrum. So let me just like tone it down a little bit. You got to get more hits. Like you have to have people there that can get more hits. Uh, that's how you fix this runners and scoring position. Hopefully, at least yeah. how do you do your due diligence is by getting guys a little bit more pop and a little bit more hits. Don't yeah. focus on, on either or like you need both for this to be hopefully fixed next right. season. And I think part of it too, like if you look at the guardians lineup outside of Jose Ramirez and to some extent, Josh Naylor and Stephen Kwan, Stephen Kwan is a guy that fits the bill of just gets hits, but it's not like the guardians are lighting the world up on fire offensively, but they've got a couple 30, 35 plus Homer dudes in the lineup that Mm -hmm. they can rely upon. So I guess that's my point with the Rays offense. It's not like they need to go from 28th in the league to fourth in the league next Mm -hmm. season, go from 28th in the league to 18th in the league. And you hope that your defense and your pitching staff can carry the weight from there and and get you, you know, 90 wins or something like that. That's all we're asking. And that's to your point about guys that can get hits that gives me pause. And we actually got a comment from a listener that we'll get to in just a moment. All the Yandy Diaz trade rumor talk. I mean, how are you going to replace Yandy Diaz project uh, production? I know he's, he's not going to get MVP votes this year, but you're banking on a dude that's got, you know, a 283 average and um, he's going to rack up a lot of hits, maybe not a lot of home runs, but he's going to find a way to get on base one way or the other. When you have a man on second or third, you don't. I mean, a hit is is, is suffices, um, and that's the thing with twenty twenty four race baseball is that um, they haven't been able to do that, and hopefully that that can be rectified. I can't wait to listen to what that commenter said, but first we got to tell you about Price Picks, people, because Price Picks. You might not know this, but it is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. That's a lot of people, okay, that are using uh, price picks. And you have to do that as well. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll by. Price picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. 15 minutes, that's... I don't know. That's uh, an inning and a half. 
okay, of 2024 baseball, people. It's pretty quick. So download the Price Picks app today. Use code LOCKED on MLB and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on MLB on price picks to get $50 when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. More things should be guaranteed in life, people. And so price picks run your game. We also want to tell you this. You can catch every pitch of the Rays hometown broadcast with Sirius XM just download the SXM app and search Rays. Also, bookmark si.com slash MLB slash Rays for written content about your Tampa Bay Rays. All right. I did want to get to uh, this comment from the Twitter machine. comes from yeah. Chris Snyder. Uh, he says, clearly, clearly, clearly this part of the season is trying out players to get a better look at next year aranda is making a good argument to replace yandi people have claimed aranda doesn't have a position and he has proven that wrong in my opinion i expect yandi to be traded i mean chris people have said that he doesn't have a position because of the glove yeah like at least in this podcast we've always said aranda can hit in fact we said it yeah. As recently as last week. If he stays so, healthy and gets opportunities. Sure. Which, you know, that's, you know, a clause for every player. Right. But like we've we've said he can hit and we believe he's going to hit. So the position thing is rather more with a glove. Like are the Rays going to how much we have seen this year? The Rays not willing to sacrifice defense for offense. Right. They have literally put their feet on the ground saying, nope, we're not doing it. So our question is, will they do it next year with Aranda? Are they going to make that that compromise of less defense for offense? Yeah. They could. They don't. I don't. I don't know. Uh, like we said last segment, Yandy Diaz is a pretty unique guy in your race lineup by being a dude that like knows how to handle the strike zone and can get a plenty of hits. He's a batting champion for God's sakes. Like right. that doesn't come I mean, around. He's, he's the race batting champion this year. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, I would have to go back and look at the numbers, but how many times has Yandi led the team in batting average? Or if we just want to isolate hits alone, he has 152 hits this year. Next closest is Caballero with 95. After that, it's Brandon Lau with 83. Ahmed Rosario, former Ray, 81. So Wait. Yandi is by number far two? the clubhouse leader in hits. Who's number two? Caballero with 95. I thought you said Caminero, and I was like, there's no way, no, 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 no. bro. Okay. Caballero has uh, 95 hits and 414 at-bats, 229 average, 645 OPS. So it's, to me, I don't see, uh, I mean, I, I feel like, look, I, I understand that you want to get younger players some run like Aranda, but if your expectation is to compete next season, I don't know how you do that without Yandy Diaz because I'm afraid that you're maybe going to put yourself in a situation like when you traded Isak Paredes. Not saying Chris Morrell won't work out, but where are all the bombs coming from? And I know Isak has struggled with the Cubs and all that, but um, you're you're going to remove like the one guy that has been stable for us his entire career, and yeah. you're expecting Aranda and whoever is acquired in trade to um to to equal that or surpass that i find that really difficult to stomach and believe by the way uh when it was 2021 and we thought yandi was pretty solid yandi's 2021 season he was hitting 256 with a 740 ops okay and he had 13 bombs and we never heard this like oh yandi well we did a little bit but not too much as a, as of yeah. now Three years later, the man has more home runs, okay? Instead of 13, he's got 14 home runs. That's pretty cool. Um, hits 119 to 152, pretty cool. He's already played more games, 134 to 136. And look at the average. Instead of 256, he's hitting already 283. And the OPS in 2021 was 740. It is now 757. This is not Yandy Diaz's worst career year now is it a drop down from his career year yeah that happens to literally every major league baseball player in the history of once you have your peak year guess what that's why it's a peak 
yeah. and things are going to go down after that. It's really simple, guys, if we just see a, a graph in front of us, okay? So I don't see how you take this guy out. I don't. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. No, let me rephrase that. I can definitely see the race trading him. A hundred percent I can right. see the trade. I just would not think that this team is going to get better in 2025 right. if you trade Yandy Diaz. Just like if you trade Isak Paredes and Randy Rosarin in 2024, you're not going to get better in 2024. No, I'm with you. And um, I guess it depends on I I think if you're the Rays, you really have to hold out for a really really good offer that makes you say, okay. We can't turn this down. I mean, they were going to trade him at the deadline, but they wanted four players in return. They had their asking price, and they said, no, uh, somebody hasn't met that yet, so yeah. we're going to hold on to him. And um, it's a tough situation because uh, he is such a valuable hitter, and I feel like um, I know we've you know had concerns about him staying healthy. Look, you're never going to expect him to play 145, 150 games, but if he's rotating between first base and DH exclusively, you should at least get 135 to 140 games. And that's what we've seen since yeah. 2021, basically. He's a 290 career hitter with the Rays. <laughs> I, I don't know how you just give that up in a vacuum. And, and it's not like you can say, oh, well, you know, he never posts. Like you just said, 134, 137, 137, 136. Yeah. Yeah, he does post because in 2024, baseball, if you if you're if you're giving me a 130 games plus year after year, you post. You post. That's one DL or one IL stint um per year. That's right. cool. And a couple uh uh days of rest like that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, if you want to give me Stephen Kwan or create some sort of acquisition of Bo Bichette, then we can there we come go. talking, but I I don't see I guess I should frame it like this. I don't see the Rays trading Yandy Diaz for a bunch of single no. A prospects. It's got to be ready now guys who can hit for average. Do you think, okay, and this is how, when we end the, 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 maybe this could be a topic Tuesday. Uh, do you think the haul for Yandy Diaz should be bigger than Isak Paredes? Um, yes, I do. I also think so. But I think it's not going to be mm. the whole age thing. Is he going that's to break fair. down team control? That that's all valid arguments. I would just say this: if you're whatever you're getting back from Yandy Diaz in return, you need a similar-minded player. Where the Rays they traded Isak Paredes, hoping back they got another Isak Paredes 2.0 in Chris Morrell. So mm -hmm. if you're trading Yandy Diaz to somebody, you're hoping you have a guy that can give you a 270 to 290 to average with 15 dingers and a bunch of hits. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. So, all right. That might have to be a topic uh, going forward or something we bring up with Klosky. Uh, yeah. Fun comment there from Chris. Um, we'll wait and see on that. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you tomorrow.